Welcome. I will be discussing about the three main ethnic groups in Nigeria. And while the fun parts get to start after the first few minutes, I will recommend you watch a bit longer so you don't miss the fun parts. So, origin Yoruba is from Odudua, whose parents are believed to have migrated down from Mecca due to religious crisis. He had seven sons and his seven sons spread out to establish various Yoruba entities around Nigeria. They settled down here in the 4th century BC. Meanwhile, the Igbo tribe started as what is called in the kingdom around 10th century. No one knows their origin, but there are claims that the founder and the first king is called Eri, who is also a god. More on this will be discussed in their creation story. Recently, Igbos claims that they are one of the lost tribes of Israel. The origin of the Aussas is not known, but one hypothesis suggests that they were a group of indigenous people joined by a common language, Aussa, while another theory explains their presence as a consequence of a migration of peoples from the southern Sahara Desert. According to tradition, one of the Aussa Barkwai was found in the 10th or 11th century. This is how Yorubas dance. Igbos call it lazy man's dance, but Yorubas generally counters this by saying that dancing is about the beauty of the movement of one's body and not the stress. Meanwhile, they also have some acrobatic dance styles called bata dance, which you will only see on special occasions. Igbos dance by shaking their body so hard, just like this. On most occasions, they hold handkerchiefs while they do their thing. When they combine this with acrobatics, they call it atidogu. Most times, Aousas dances this way, but they also have another style called korosu. Korosu dance involves a lot of acrobatic and traditional martial arts. If you are asked which tribe can party best, uh, it's Yoruba. Even if it's not an option on the question paper, it's better for you to write it with a pen. Second best is also Yoruba. So just like most wedding ceremonies in the country, Yoruba has a long list of what they call Eruyawu, which is also called engagement list. A typical amount of the bride price in Yoruba wedding is 5,000 Naira. The money is even returned in most cases because they believe that their daughter is not for sale. Foods cooked in their wedding ceremonies include pounded yam, amala, patty jollof and fried rice, depending on the pockets of both families. Drink? Yeah, sure. There used to be a lot of it as well but not as much as that of the Igbos. As a member of another tribe, if you are dating an Igbo lady, people could be telling you that you have to work harder. This is because of the wide belief that Igbo wedding and engagement list is long like this. The bride price is the highest in the country. It is believed that the level of the bride's education also influenced the bride price. Most aspects of the ceremonies are the same with that of the Yorubas, but we can also see some differences here. Fulani marriage in particular involves Sharu, a game between two suitors flogging each other to win a maiden's hand in marriage. Though there are claims that the tradition is obsolete, it is still being practiced in remote areas. The second stage is Kougal which is handing over of a herd of cattle prior to the maidens moving in as a wife and then Kabal, which is an Islamic ceremony similar to marriage ceremony but without the attendance of bride or groom. Also, Fulanis marries young. No special value is placed on virginity. Yorubas eat Amala, Inyon, which is called Pandediam. Igbos also eat this but it's just a borrowed food. Inyo belongs to the Ondo state Ekiti people. So, Eba. 
soups includes eredu begiri a4 which is also vegetable but in get type mm. all tribes eat vegetables but yorubas will eat vegetables like green shoko igbo or bagba igbos abacha which is called african salad if yoruba says you are doing abacha it means you are mixing rubbish when i connect the dots i guess it must have emanated from the look of this food nkobi ofe onugu owa soup okro soup and gari yorubas also eat okro soup and gari but it is not called gari over there it is called eba eba atila however if you say you eat gari in yoruba land it means you pour uncooked gari inside water and drink this is a weird thing in some eastern parts in the north no one eats it at all but they would rather use it as a sort of glue to fix tires Igbos are also ranked the best cook in the country Aousa of Fulani Aousa of Fulani is Chugu, Masa, Miyangeda Bizarre food Yorubas eat winged termite also called Isunsun also green grasshopper I personally eat both of these though I stopped eating grasshopper now Igbos it is believed that it is the calabas that eats dogs, but it is just a common meat to the calabas. Igbos also eat them and they don't deny it. I don't know as of now of making this video, but if I later find out, you will see it pinned to the top comment. And if you know it, you can just drop it in comment. Well, I don't know if this is the darnest tradition in Yoruba land, but I just learned that if a baby falls from the mother's back, the mother has to run around the market naked. If not, when the child grow up, seven husbands or wives that he or she marry will die. Ibos, I don't know for now, but if I later know of one, you can check it out in the comment. This is particular to the Fulanis. Before a man can be married to his wife, he or she has to endure some pains. He will be beaten with canes and he must not show any sign of pain. If he shows it, he is not yet a man, so he is disqualified. Yorubas believe that if you beat a male child with a broom, his sexual gun will disappear. It is a taboo in Igbo land to sweep at night. Anyone who does that is believed to be sweeping away his family's wealth. So the Aousas and Fulani, they believe that whoever fishes on Saturday will turn into monkey. Yorubas places high priority on respect, titles, greetings, and all the methods of communications all as elements of respect. Then also Yorubas, they party a lot, especially the badons. They can party for the following reasons. Turning of the corpse side. Also when a child gains admission. A typical Ibu has a business gene running in his blood. When they offer to help you, there are high chances that they are doing it for hidden gain that you are not here aware of. So very manipulative, but you will hardly see a Igbo beggar. I don't think there is one. Fulanis or Aousas will protect their wives as much as they can. You can't sit next to their woman in a cab. Some of them build high fences just to make sure that their wives are not being seen by outsiders. Also, Fulanis will go any length to protect their cartoons. Today, most Igbos are traders and entrepreneurs, while Yorubas will work as civil servants or employees of private and government enterprise. Yorubas will sell Agbo, in English, herbs and medicine. I know some houses also sell this, but it is not that common. Igbos, I will leave this to the great thinkers and experts. It is only Aousas that sells suya. It is a sort of roasted meat. It is widely believed that the Yorubas love pepper. I don't know how this started, but the thing is, it's only in few Yoruba homes 
that this happens. It happens in some Igbo homes too. A Yoruba can intentionally add extra pepper to food at times, especially when there is cold. So if you happen to encounter a meal uttered by a Yoruba at this time, boom, you are in for it. Also, Yorubas believe that when you eat pepper, you have a stronger life. Overall, you rarely meet a Yoruba food with much pepper in it. Uh, this is false that they don't defend their territory. They do when the need arises and they do it with more tactics. Examples are Some people believe that most Igbos are stingy, that an Igbo man would rather die than give some more money. If you meet a stingy Igbo, it's either you are unlucky or it doesn't have and you don't believe. During my one year of stay in the East, I have a lot of food items I didn't buy with my money because they keep coming in as gifts. There was a day a pure water orca that I have never met tried to dash me water. It is also believed that they love money and that's funny because everyone loves money. Our approaches are just different. Yorubas generally observes the political system, argument ready and looks for who to blame. It only takes a little time for them to identify that they follow the wrong person. They believe every politician are liars. Igbos, they believe they are temporarily part of the country, the most cheated group, and that they will be independent by tomorrow or next tomorrow. Also, as Fulani sees the political system as more of a competition between parts of the countries. Presently, they believe they own the country. They are the most cooperative political entity. These political attitudes exclude the politicians. Those ones are all driven by their political goals. And Yorubas are always strategic and they could make effective use of technological equipment. I don't want to give examples of this, but I may if there is much argument or request for it. Igbos are creative and innovative in nature. They have manufacturing skills, examples are the made in Naba products. They also produce weapons such as armor tanks that they use during the civil war. The Awusas are the energetic people that face the country through their passion for agriculture. If not for them, food won't be affordable in the country. So fill in the gaps, make sure you like, share and subscribe.